All right, so let's talk about how to write better Facebook ads. So earlier this week and, and kind of going back into last week, there was some discussion here in the group about reviewing um, face, a Facebook ad about Pilates. And it got a couple of uh, likes and things and then got a few actual emails came in from that and thought, well, wouldn't it be interesting if we just took a deeper dive into how to write better Facebook ads? So I put together an actual like slide presentation for today, which is a little bit different. Normally, I just we just get out and have a conversation with each other. But th today, I thought it might be good to kind of dive in and kind of go through a real life example of an actual Facebook ad that was posted here in this group for review. And then just kind of take a deep dive into what makes what makes for a good ad and what makes for a good landing page and how do you scope all that together and you know get better results from from the ads that you run on Facebook. So let's go ahead and just dive into it and take a look at this example ad. Now, let me put forth a disclaimer. I didn't write it. I don't have anything to do with this business. Um, I've never talked to the business owner, yada, yada. It's just, you know, just an example for what we can, you know, for us to go through to figure out like, how to do better with Facebook ads. So let me dive into it with you. I'm going to share my screen. All right. So this is the ad itself. And, um, you know, building better ads by and the the main theme that I'm going to underscore today is by giving people something to want. You know, that's that's going to be the big idea. So let's kind of jump into it here. This is um, let's see. So there's a three step sequence that I wanted to go through for what's the purpose of the ads in the first place. So this is an example of the, this is the ad that we're dealing with. But the three steps that we want to go through, the first one is it's critical to present your, your offer in the correct order, right? So there's a certain order that we want to go through when presenting the content of an ad. And the order, the first thing is your curiosity. And the ad's responsibility is to create curiosity. The second thing is the relevancy. And that's really the job of the landing page. And then the final step is the action, like you know, putting a call to action in place so that the ad actually does something for you. So you generate leads or build an email list or get a call on the calendar or something like that, some kind of an action. And it's really those three steps. And if you goof up the sequence, it all tends to fall apart. Meaning that like, if you try to put like too much like teaching or if you try to like tell people in the ad what you're planning to tell them on the landing page or like maybe your landing page even has like a webinar on it or something like that and you're planning to like say some cool stuff, like maybe do some teaching or instructing in, in the webinar about why people should sign up for a Pilates class with you or something, but you put all that content in the ad, then you've kind of flip-flopped the order. And people don't care about the details yet because they haven't bought into the overall concept of what you're offering. And so it's kind of like with anything else, right? It's like if you were going to go out on a, on a date, <laughs> you, you would think, okay, well, I've got to you know, take a shower, that I'm going to get dressed and then I'm going to, you know, do my hair or something like that. And if you did it in the wrong order, like if you did your hair and got dressed and then took a shower, you, you know, that's ridiculous, right? It, it ruins everything. So the same applies here where you, it, the, the order really makes a difference and all the components can be good, right? Like you can have a really great hairstyle, a really awesome outfit and take an awesome shower. But if you don't, <laughs> but all, all the individual parts can be good. But if you put them in the wrong order, you end up kind of, destroying the whole thing. And the same thing is true with these ads, where it's like, if you put the curiosity too far down in the, down the road, then people never even get to it and they don't become curious. So it's really important for the ad to create that spark of curiosity to be like, what can I do to find out more about this thing? And then you go to the landing page where you kind of get the framework, the relevancy of what the, what the whole concept of your ad is all about. And then you build this momentum up and saying, okay, well, here's, here's the call to action now. So I wanted to underscore the importance of the sequence and it's those three steps. And the main goal of the ad itself is to just get the click. Like you only want to get the click. Like that's the main thing for the ad. So the ad's job is to build curiosity to get the click. And so to do that, you present the problem. Like what is the problem that the ad is addressing? The problem that your, that your ideal client has then you let people know that you've got a solution to that problem. And then if they don't click the ad, then they're missing out on that potentially awesome solution. So that's going to be the overall sequence of dealing with these ads. And then you think, well, okay, well, how long should my ad be? Like how much content should I write in the ad? Like, should it be super long? Should it be, was one sentence enough? So uh, most of the ads that I've run now, I've probably spent hundreds of thousands of dollars over the past few years running ads on Facebook. 
And, um, you know, for myself, for, for our clients, you know, just I had a lot of experience running these Facebook ads, but they're usually for relatively high ticket things, like things between like three to $10,000, maybe even more. So like pretty expensive things. And that changes the structure of the ad a little bit, right? So like if it's something inexpensive that you can just kind of buy impulsively, then you don't really need a whole lot of context or copy to kind of create that outcome. But if it's going to be something that's going to be pretty meaningful of an expense for somebody, then you tend to need longer ads for that type of a thing just to kind of convey what's going on. But so then we have this ad that we're dealing with right here. This one is very, very short, right? It's just it's basically just one sentence at, at the top with like a super duper short, you know, headline at the bottom. And so I'm going to try to stick to that structure for this review because one of the things that I've been told about this ad is that it does get clicks, but that the landing page is not converting. There's no, nobody's actually, um, you know, submitting their email address to get this $15 coupon. So for anybody listening on audio only, and you can't see the screen, the ad says, celebrate the new year with the new you, get $15 off your first session at Mindful Movements Pilates. And then the headline at the bottom is take $15 off today. And there's a button to click to learn more. So if the ad is too short, so we we're just talking about the ad length, like how long should it be? If the ad is too short, one of the problems with having just like a one sentence ad is that you're not really qualifying the lead. And so what that means is you could potentially be paying for clicks from people who aren't your ideal audience, you know, but, but they don't know that yet because there's not enough information on the ad to filter out people that you don't want to be working with or that don't qualify for your offer and for whatever reason. And um, so if, if the ad is too short, you end up getting more clicks, but the clicks are lower quality. But if the ad is too long, then nobody will read it, right? So it's people, ah, oh, it's too much, I can't, it's too overwhelming, I can't read all of that. It's, it's, I'm not gonna do it, I'm not gonna invest up front all the time it takes to read this big long ad, because I don't even know what you're talking about. And so they just kind of scroll on through and be like, ah, oh, it's too overwhelming. So the sweet spot. So I found that the sweet spot is about 10 sentences or like roughly three to five little paragraphs. And this provides enough space to write a tiny little story that makes it clear what problem your offer is solving and who you're talking to, and also who you're disqualifying. So you're trying to say who this is for, who this is not for, what, what are we talking about, what's the context of this thing? And I found, you know, seven or eight or 10 sentences, you know, kind of chunked down into like maybe three to five little, little paragraphs, tends to be kind of that sweet spot for being long enough to kind of uh, qualify your leads, but not so long that it's just overwhelming and everybody just skips it. So um, let's get to this next one here. So here's some things that I like about the ad. So this is the, the combination on, on, the, on the left side, you see the ad itself. On the right side, you see the landing page. And just below where I was able to capture with the screenshot, there is in fact a form where you put your email address in, click submit and you get a coupon. So there is in fact that, I just didn't capture it in the screenshot. So, <laughs> so I, I, I would have said, hey, make sure you have a form or whatever to do something. But that's all there is on this page. It's just you, everything that you see here plus a little form for an email capture at the bottom. And some things that I like, I like the consistency, like you click through from the ad to the landing page and you can say, okay, I'm in, in the right spot. Uh, you know, that consistent picture. Um, the image is sort of eye-catching, I guess. I mean, it's like, I would have used brighter colors, but it's sort of on topic. It looks like somebody's kind of doing Pilates or exercising and it's not too busy. So it seems like it's the kind of thing that you know, you might say, okay, if I'm into Pilates or, or exercise or fitness, I might look at it. Um, so I like that, but I probably wouldn't have used brown because brown doesn't really pop. It doesn't, it's not that eye-catching. So I like that. Um, but some of the things that I, I don't really like too much about it, um, we'll just kind of do some surface level things and we'll d dive in a little bit deeper. The big thing is that, that I don't like is I don't like the focus on new year, new me. And this kind of goes back to the title of our presentation, which is, I uh, don't feel like that means anything, right? It doesn't, it doesn't qualify who you're, who you're trying to reach. It doesn't talk about a problem that you're trying to solve. It doesn't, it doesn't mean anything. It, it, it's kind of on me to define what the new me is going to be. And how do I know that you can help me with that goal? Like, it's not telling me that I'm going to lose weight. Or it's not going to tell me I'm going to get stronger. It's not going to tell me anything. It just uh, assumes that I have already in my mind some concept of, what a new me is and that I know how Pilates is going to help me achieve that goal. And so there's a lot of assumptions that are kind of, kind of floating around under the surface a little bit. 
And that's what I wanted to dig into next. So how can we improve the ad? Well, right off the bat, it's like, who is it targeting? And it looks like right now it's targeting people that already know about Pilates. They already know what a Pilates course is all about and what it's going to do for them. And they're just looking for a deal, right? That's kind of, it's super broad in the sense of it can be basically anybody, but it's also super narrow in the sense of if you've never heard of Pilates before, you don't care. You know, it's like, well, that must not be for me. I'm not looking for Pilates. What problem are they solving, right? Partic no, no particular problem. Like I have to know what Pilates does for me up front in order to, for me to understand what the problem is that I'm going to have solved in my life. So that's not so great. Not you know, what outcome am I going to get out of it? I don't really know. Like I don't like, so I, I could have a problem like, like neck pain, back pain. I could have lack of flexibility. I could have, you know, I don't know. They need a new weight loss, whatever. The outcome is a little bit different, meaning like, why would I do Pilates in the first place? Will I get, you know, a stronger back, a, you know, more flexible legs? You know, what, what, what's going to happen to me? What outcome? It doesn't say what, what happens. And you just have to assume that, you know, the, the reader already knows. Um, who am I putting my trust in? It's like, I don't know. Because like my initial thought is, okay, this, this, this image is simple and clean enough to know what's going on. But it also sort of looks like stock photography. Right? Like I, I don't get a sense that the person in the picture is actually the instructor of the course, nor do I get a sense that when I attend the class that I'm actually going to be in that studio. It just looks like this was a stock picture. And so I don't really know who I'm working with or, or who I'm putting my trust in. And I also don't know what gives this person any authority. Like, is there some, some set of credentials? I mean, have they been doing this a long time? Do they help a certain type of people get a great outcome? It's like, like, why this Pilates course instead of some, some other Pilates course? Why should I take this one instead of the one that I've been going to or the one that's close to my house? Or, you know, there's, there's no sense of, of, of authority for why that this is different. And, um, and again, the only goal of the ad is to get the click. And so if I've got all these questions running around in my head, then I kind of assume, hey, this isn't for me. And I just kind of sc scroll on by and, or, or just, you know, bounce off the ad. So I'm not getting, I'm, I'm, I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time trying to figure it out, you know, on my own. I want the ad to present these, these questions. I want, I want to know these things in order to feel like, yeah, this is for me. This is what I want. And then I kind of move to the next screen and kind of go to the landing page. So the ad is not designed to convince people to buy. That's the job of the landing page. So keeping that in mind is important as well. You don't want to, you don't want to do the selling or whatever in the ad. The ad again, it's, it's driving that curiosity to get the click, to go to the landing page. And then the landing page causes uh, or uh, brings about the relevancy. Uh, so always stay focused on the very next action, kind of one step at a time. So curiosity, relevancy, call to action. And then we can take a look at what's wrong with the landing page. And it's, uh, you know, kind of in the same, same genre of, of issues as the ad itself. And I think to myself, okay, well, what am I getting myself into, right? So it's like, is this really the studio? Is, you know, what, what, are, what are my expectations? And is this a private session or is this a group session? Is this, a, is this in person or is this a virtual session? You know, I, I, don't, I don't know any of these things. And then I want to know how long does it last? Like, what am I committing myself to? Is this 45 minutes? Is this an hour? Is this, you know, 15 minutes? Like, how long is the session? And, you know, what's the normal price? So if I get $15 off my first lesson, then what do I pay for the second one? So I don't know that either. And am I going to fit in? Is it, is it for beginners? Is it for advanced people? Like, do I have to be as advanced as the person in the picture? Or can I just be getting started or something like that? And then the, the last problem, which I think is probably the biggest problem, is the assumption that I'm going to go through this popcorn journey through the website to figure this stuff out. Right. So like I've got all these questions and I'm not really ready to submit my email address to get the $15 coupon because I don't know any of these things yet. And so then I think, OK, well, let me look at the navigation and say, OK, well, let me go look at the virtual studio. OK, that kind of hints that this might be a virtual class rather than in person. Well, let me check out the contact us page to see if, you know, see where these guys are located. And, you know, all of these things are kind of happening. Maybe flick over to the about page. You know, who is this? You know, so I want to learn all that stuff. But now I've left the landing page. And then after I find that stuff out, how do I get back, right? So it's like, it, this probably is not the homepage of the website and there's no link in the navigation to get back to this. So what do I do? Do, do I click back <laughs> you know, a bunch of times to kind of get back to the landing page so I can get my $15 you know, coupon? And that tends to be the biggest problem. Of course, the answer is no. Like once you leave the, the page, you're pretty much gone forever, especially in this context where there's really no clear way to get back. So those are some, some pretty serious issues 
with why this landing page isn't converting. So then what do you do to fix it? So let's develop a stronger call to action. How do we do that? How do we, how do we get a strong call to action? And right off the bat, I would say that it's usually best to avoid using money or coupons as the call to action on a landing page unless you are running an e-commerce site. Now, if you actually have an e-commerce site where people buy the thing right now, right on the site, you can make an argument for having a coupon be a lead magnet. But in this context, that's not happening. This is, in this context, the $15 is not something that you spend on the site. In fact, you don't even get it on the site. You have to put in your email address and then, and then you get the $15. So there's a couple of reasons that I kind of avoid using money as, or a coupon as a lead magnet on a non-e-commerce site. And the first one is it's not immediately valuable, right? Like I don't even care about the $15 unless I d already have decided to come in and actually participate in the session or something like that. Otherwise, it's like I don't even want the 15 bucks. It's also not interesting, right? There, there's, there's, there's no curiosity hook to make me think, oh, wow, if I, if I, don't, if, if I don't get this, this piece of information, then I'm missing out on something cool. And so, you know, money and coupons are just, they're just not interesting. And so therefore you miss out on that, that kind of curiosity hook drive to get, to get the, the, the visitor to take some, some sort of an action. And a coupon can also devalue your offer. Right. And so like the perfect example of this is like, have you ever tried to buy like cable TV service or like, I don't know, like the NFL Sunday ticket or something like that? Or, or just something where they, they give you like the first year for like a really, really reduced rate. And then a year later, they kind of bump you up and like double or triple or just like the price just goes way, way, way through the roof. I mean, I've got friends. In fact, my next door neighbor even is a guy that um, every year he'll call up the TV com company and be like, hey, you know, I, I'm, you know, I'm going to cancel my service unless you give me the first year rates again and stuff like that. So it's like by kind of offering that coupon, it's, you, you sort of run the risk of devaluing the, the, the real price of your offer. Another example of devaluing the price and actually having a coupon kind of burn you out rather than get leads. Another client that I worked with, this is a, this is a year or two ago. Um, ran a med spa. It's kind of a, it's more. It's basically a med spa, and they were running an ad on Facebook with coupons. And um, what people would do basically would they get the coupon and they come in for just like a massage, and then they leave and never come back because they were just traveling. They were just had had, had a night in town off of um, you know off the airplane or whatever, and they would then go in and you know kind of just look for an inexpensive way to to you know get the cramps out of their back or whatever before they had to fly again the next day. And they weren't really. They couldn't even join the med spa if they wanted to, right? Because they were just passing through town. And so that's another way that it just kind of devalues your offer and kind of burns you out. And so for all of these reasons, I think that uh, you know, coupons and money tend to be boring and ineffective lead magnets most of the time. Um, and then the last thing is your market is probably too broad if all you can think of is money as the inspiring thing to, uh, to drive a lead. Right, so like if, if you can't think of, well, what, should, what would I say that would be better than, than money, then it probably means you're targeting too broad of an audience. We'll talk about that in a second here too. So how do you pick an audience? Well, what I would do if I was working with this client, the first thing I would do is I would start making a list of all of the things that Pilates can help you with. And so I would start jotting some stuff down, like what are the benefits of Pilates? Well, relief from lower back pain might be a good one. And that could be, maybe we're targeting office workers who are sitting all day, maybe injury rehab from like sports or, or car accidents or falling down or something like that. You could even pick, pick a particular sport, like how to recover from a football injury or something like that. Um, and so now you're really getting, you're, you're kind of combining what the problem is with who has the problem. Um, improving slouch shoulders, like posture or something like that. People that have computer jobs or something. Um, you know, posture for women over 40, for example, neck pain for computer jobs, whatever, um, exercise for people with knee problems, uh, add yards to your golf drive, uh, get a beach ready butt, right? Like get your body ready for the beach, you know, so, you know whatever it might be, you're, by, by beginning to talk about all the benefits that you're getting from, from Pilates, you also sort of naturally flow into who wants those benefits, right? So for example, if you feel like you could add yards to your golf drive, obviously people that play golf would be in that audience. So then you think, okay, what about the call to action? And you want to think about what do you really want the call to action to be? And if getting an email address really is the goal, then what we want to do is we want to create something interesting, immediately valuable, and that builds your authority. 
but before you even get into that, you might think, well, is getting an email address really what we want to do? Or is it something better than that? Wouldn't it be better if they actually booked the, the appointment right here on the website and kind of got that commitment right on the spot rather than just an email address for a coupon, right? Something like that. Or maybe they could even pay for the session, like the whole thing. So you might want to think about having a more meaningful commitment as the call to action. But you know, get, be that as it may, let's assume that, that what we really want to do is we want to build an email list of potential leads that we can then nurture in some other way. And, um, and so, okay, getting, getting an email list is going to be the call to action here. And then you begin to think, okay, what if I create a lead magnet? So rather than a coupon, what if I said, here's my top 10 low carb dessert recipes, because maybe I'm targeting the audience who wants to have a beach ready body, right? And so, you know, we've gone through the holidays and everybody's put on a few pounds and now spring is just around the corner. And wouldn't it be great if we could lose a little bit of weight and kind of get our beach ready body going? Well, okay, well, here's my top 10 low carb dessert recipes to get that beach ready body without having to give up chocolate, <laughs> right? So that, that would be cool, right? Or what about five exercises you can do at work to tone your butt while you're answering emails? <laughs> you know, something like that, right? That's pretty interesting. It's like, okay, well, I answer emails all day long. What can I do? to you know, kind of get fit while I'm, while I'm working. That sounds interesting. Or what about this one? What about cardio versus high intensity interval training versus Pilates? When to do what? To get your beach ready butt, <laughs> right? Get a, little, get a little rhyme in there for it or whatever. So it's like, but that's interesting. It's like, well, okay, cardio uh, and, and, and high intensity, intensity interval training and Pilates, like, tell me when to do what? Like, what's, what's, what are the benefits? Should I mix them all together? Should I focus on one more than the other? Like, what's the pattern there? to really get that beach ready body that I really want. And so now you're thinking, okay, this is interesting. I'm learning something, I'm getting value and it's building your authority. I mean, it, it's telling people, hey, I know what's going on. This is an authority building kind of thing. There's curiosity kind of baked into the mix. You know, there, there's sort of even the fear of missing out, right? If, if, I, if I don't know how to combine cardio versus HIIT workouts versus Pilates, I might be working out way too hard and just not getting any results or even getting getting you know, injured or, or, or over, over, overworked or something like that, and it might not work out for me. So there's, there's that aspect of it too. And so then you think, okay, well, look what we've done. Now, because of the value of picking a problem, we are creating a target market. Here's the disclaimer, by the way. You're not pigeonholing your business. You're creating a target market. And so what that means is if you feel like that Pilates could be helpful for more than just developing a beach ready body, because you could also help with all the other things with, you know, posture and neck pain and, you know, knee problems and all the other things, that's totally fine. You know, keep doing all the other things. But, but what we're doing right now is we're creating a marketing campaign that's going to reach some of the people that you feel like you can help the best, like one particular audience. And then if you want to, run multiple marketing campaigns all at the same time. But each marketing campaign is targeting a specific audience. And when you do it that way, you will get dramatically better results from your ads because there's relevancy and there's curiosity and you're building authority in that particular space. So what you're doing is you're creating targeted marketing. You're not pigeonholing your whole business. And kind of moving on, and picking an audience makes it much easier to know what to say. So if you feel like you have writer's block and, and you don't know what to say and all you can come up with is some sort of a financial incentive to um, in inspire people like with the coupon, it probably suggests that the audience is too broad and that means you can't think of what to say. So if you have writer's block, consider narrowing down your audience and that will oftentimes solve the whole problem. Now you know, what, know, know exactly what to say. In fact, lots of things to say. And then you can create a specific outcome that the audience wants. So like once you pick the problem and you know what the audience is, you now know what the outcome is going to be as well. So maybe the problem is, hey, I gained some weight over, over the holidays. The outcome I want is this beach ready body. And it's, you know, the kind of people that care about that stuff, you know, people that go to the beach. So you can target those types of folks. Um, and now you're offering exciting lead magnets where people feel like they're missing out unless they get what you're offering. You've got clarity about what to say in your ad copy. And here's kind of the end result of, of the ad that I kind of put together with all that stuff in mind. Now, again, if I was writing this ad myself, hadn't, not, with, not with the starting point that we had before, I probably would have written more content. But nevertheless, I wanted to keep to the structure of this ad, just like the one sentence or two sentences at the top, and then it's kind of just one sentence or two sentences at the bottom, and that's it. But putting in mind all the things, like getting that beach ready body, who is the audience, what are the benefits? And so the end result was, um, we're on the other side of the holidays, 
We've all got a few pounds to lose, right? Now's the time to start building your beach ready body. And that's the, that's the copy of the ad. And then down below it says, beach ready bodies for people with real jobs and busy lives. How to build your beach ready body even while answering emails at work. And so all of that is defining what the problem is, who the audience is, you know, people with real jobs. Like I don't have time to, you know, do all this fitness, workout, diet. You know, I don't have the time to, to be just be like a paid supermodel or whatever who's paid to get fit all the time. It's like, I got a real life. I got a job. I got kids. I got all this other stuff going on. But yet I also want to be fit. So we're really targeting an audience. And then we're even hinting at what the lead magnet's going to be when you get to the landing page about, you know, exercises you can do at work or, you know, stuff you can do kind of on your own. You're just kind of in between your Pilates sessions, here's some other stuff you can do to get even more benefits. And then you click learn more, boom, and you're off to the landing page. And then also I picked a different ad. So this particular picture, um, if I could, what I really would have wanted to do is taken a picture of the actual people that you'll be learning from so I can actually see who it is. But even if you can't do that, I just flipped it over to um, you know, something brighter, orange, but still suggesting you know fitness and stuff. So that's kind of the idea behind what I would have done for... Up, updating that particular ad. So just kind of back to me again. So if you feel like this is kind of the thing that you want to work on and you want to be able to write better ad copy, this is a significant thing that we spend time on in double stack. It's like, how do you write more persuasive copy for your own website? Like, what do you say on your website? What do you say on your ads? What if you put a landing page together? What should that be like? Or what, if, what about, what if you're going to do an email somewhere? Or what if you're going to set up a Facebook group or, you know, all of these different places where you might be talking about yourself. We put a lot of emphasis on how to do that so that you're really talking to the people you wanna be talking to, you're pushing away the people you don't wanna be talking to, and you're landing these five-figure clients that are keeping you on retainer. And you can even turn around and use these exact same skills on behalf of your clients. And now that's really gonna be boosting their results because of the knowledge that you now have about you know, writing better copy and building better ads. So that's why I thought it'd be kind of fun to kind of get in here and talk about all that stuff. If you wanna talk about how to do this with your ads or what to say on your website, or just wanna talk kind of one-on-one, -on -one, about how to implement some of these things into your business or into your clients' businesses, then go on over to doublestack.net slash call and you'll see my calendar pop up and we can get on the phone and talk about this stuff together. Because if you can do this, this is, this is the beginning of a transformational impact for the people that you're working with, right? So you have to be able to not only have systems to nurture leads, but you have to be able to get people into, the, into your systems in the first place, right? So you have to have a whole, a whole package in order to be able to drive results for people. Otherwise, what you'll find is you're just giving things to your clients, right? So like if you just give them a website, then what are they gonna do with it? Like how do you know that getting a better website equals getting more clients? So what you're really talking about is the difference between just additive stuff, you know, I'm gonna add a website to my client's business versus I'm gonna transform their business by you know, throwing a flow of clients in their direction. And that's really the thing. And so when you get to the point where you're offering a transformative result, right? So when you get to the point where you've got all the pieces dialed in and you can, you can say confidently that I can drive more business your way, then you can make the shift into value pricing, right? So this is the shift away from hourly pricing or the a shift away from charging based on what a website should cost and moving into charging based on the types of results you're creating. And that's where you get into the 15 to 20 to $30,000 projects. Because like if you can create $150,000 for somebody, why can't you charge you know, 15 or 20,000 for something like that? So that is ultimately the heart of what Double Stack is all about, to get you into the, the ability to value price your work rather than having to just charge based on what people feel like website should cost. And that pulls you out of this kind of flow of low budget clients that are usually very stressful to work with and into this flow of clients that really do need your help and are counting on results and are willing to you know, compensate you really well when you start driving business into their business. And you know, writing Facebook ads can be a component of that. It's not the only thing by, by any means, but being able to write persuasive copy in general is really helpful. And then knowing, well, what are some of the other tools that I could use to start driving traffic into my client's business? And then once the traffic starts coming in, what can I do to grab it? You know, so I can you know, take advantage of all of, the, all of the traffic flowing across without it slipping through my fingers. So if you feel like that's, that's something that you wanna talk about, head over to doublestack.net slash call and pick a time on the calendar. We'll work on this stuff together and, uh, and get this stuff all dialed in so you're building your own six-figure business. 
<laughs> All right, guys, that's what we got for today. If you have any questions, just kind of leave them in the comments. I'll keep an eye on that throughout the week. And uh, head on over and pick a time at doublestack.net slash call. And I'll talk to you there. Take care.